basically the question was about creation how can we get back to our creative potential and I said the key to that is the moment and as long as your mind is divided into past present and future creation maintenance and destruction when you have that you cannot attain the source but when you attain this moment 100% then you also attain all the principles and function of creation, maintenance, and destruction. This is so important that in India, they devoted three separate deities to it. Brahma for the creator, Vishnu for the maintainer, and Shiva for the destroyer. And the next question was about that kind of principle. How can we use this kind of destructive process? And I said, don't think about annihilation, think about recycling. If you want to attain Shiva, go to a recycling station. That's where the old forms, they become emptiness. And out of that can come new forms. And that's why when you practice, there's a lot of destructive feelings, thoughts, impulses, and forms of consciousness in you. And don't be afraid of that. What is important is that you recycle all that energy and not attach to anything, any kind of karma that arises in your mind, but take responsibility for your actions, speech, thoughts, and emotions, because you produce them, you maintain them, you recycle them. But you, as the factory, you are not identical with any of that, although you are fully responsible. This is the paradox we have to deal with. If we don't understand any sides of this or any aspects of this, we are missing something. And when we miss something, we make mistakes. And that's why we have to see it in its entirety, the full cycle. So if you really want to get to your own mental recycling station, look at the Heart Sutra. That's how recycling begins. So when we recite, the, all the five skandhas are empty. That's your dump truck, your empty big dump truck that can receive all your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind, etc. and recycle what you see, hear, taste, smell, touch, think, etc. That recycling is very important, but since we are attached to all these, we take this as our identity, we are afraid of it. Because I will disappear. I will be annihilated. No, your ego will disappear. Your ego will be recycled. Your ego will be annihilated, not you. To the extent that you confuse your true nature with your ego, to that extent you suffer and make others suffer. To the extent you take away the false notion of yourself and become who you truly are or what you truly are, to that extent you do not exert or impose this suffering on yourself and others. So if we cannot know ourselves, the consciousness that we are the Buddha nature, and we objectify ourselves into the ego, the feelings and emotions. When we meditate, for example, we try to listen to sounds, be present to anything, but how can we feel that inner state, let's say? That you want to feel it, you lose it. Not, not to feel it, but I don't have to identify with sounds, with anything. So how can I know myself? myself? Because it's like playing hide and seek. You can't know it. If you want to know it, you will play hide and seek forever. Experience it. That's why we return to don't know. You cannot know this, but you can experience this and attain this. If you know it, it's already something else. It's already an image. It's already an abstraction, a projection. Okay? The smarter we are, the bigger the problem. The more obtuse someone is, in the opposite of smart, the harder it is to comprehend the teaching. The smarter you are, the more difficult it is to attain your true nature. So if you rely on your smartness, which has limited use but necessary function, then you really cannot attain what is beyond thinking because your smart thinking captures you. <coughs> so that's why Sumsan said, put it all down. Don't check your mind, don't check the world, don't want to know. Return before thinking. That's all that matters. And that's why we perceive sound.
That's why we recite the mantra. That's why we ask the great question, what is this? What is this? So when you do that, all this knowledge, all this desire for a specific idea is gone. Then there is no more in the oscillation between zero and one. Six patriarchs said, originally nothing, where is dust? Remember that. Okay? You're welcome. I don't feel really good because I analyze myself continuously and I'm doing it in an obsessive way. And um, I created my identity regarding spirituality. And I, my ego feeds with needs, desires, conflicts, and so on, related to spirituality. So if I obtain something, it's like I die. So I never attain because it has to go on and on to feed the ego, to feed himself with the future. So I don't know what to do in this sense. I try to meditate, but when I'm not meditating and I'm trying to be present, it doesn't work. I'm, I'm beating myself up. Julia, come on, be present. Listen to the beat. And it doesn't work. So I'm in pain all the time. I cannot even sleep. I will put a parachute on your back and throw you out of an airplane. That will stop it. And I'm serious. Because this kind of thinking sickness attachment to analytic zero and one type of thinking, it never ends. But if there is this, the experience of no thinking, then you have a foothold. So if meditation doesn't give it to you, and life gives it to you, if this shock doesn't give it to you, then another kind of shock will give it to you. You already understand. Analysis, thinking does not get you enlightenment. But you still believe you die if you attain. Where is that death? It doesn't exist. So you don't know what happens when you get some kind of attainment. But that don't know will help you. So keep don't know mind. So when you have this kind of analytic, linear thought, then always go back. What is this? Where does this come from? And another thought appears. Then where does this come from? Where does this come from? And very quickly you let go of this thinking process. Alternative, a mantra. And I think for you a mantra would be better. And repeat that mantra. That recycles your cognition. Turns it back into energy. And you don't kill yourself with your own analytic thought. Okay? Because you're right. Uh, our notion of self always wants to reconstitute itself. Don't fight that. Make it very transparent. And if it's transparent, you see it, then it's the best way to become selfless. So that your notion of ego and your true nature would be an overlap, and then your I, my, me disappears. It's like going home. It's like the water drop returning to the ocean. An experience you can trust and you don't have to separate yourself again and analyze yourself again and constitute an ego again because there's no more search. It's not something you want to look for because you are here. You have arrived. You came to the point of no thought, no feeling, no perception, no impulse, no consciousness. Then the world and you became one again. Then this returning home, becoming complete, becoming relieved and released, all that will be yours. And for that you only have to practice. But not with expectation. Not with analysis. Not with thinking over Zen. Okay? So don't kill your own effort. Just keep it simple. Keep it steady. Keep it clear. And moment to moment return before thinking. And don't believe your own BS. That's it. You believe it. That kills you, not attainment. The Buddha, when he was sitting under the Bodhi tree, he saw all kinds of visions. One was the anger type. That's when the fighting army, all those demons, they 
had the arrows shot at him. He didn't believe it. It was just illusion. So it became flowers, fell down on the ground. Next thing was desire. Desire was suggesting that you know, bodily joy will give lasting happiness. And that's why he would have to follow it, as most of us do. So he didn't believe that, so these, the daughters of Mara disappeared. There's nothing wrong with the daughters of Mara, except if you take them for deities or people who they are not. Okay? You have to recognize them as they are. The third one was his own self-image, the Buddha. And if he believes that he is the Buddha, then he gets killed by that self-image. And that's where it connects to you. You believe your own analytic thinking, that kills you. You make that into your self-image, that kills you. Cuts your path. And if you stay clear, you stay simple, you return before thinking, you return to the sounds, you return to the questions or the mantra, you can save yourself. We can all do that. Okay? Uh, you say let it go. Let go people. I had this experience a while ago. I let it go. It was not good because uh, there was not no consciousness in it. It was just letting go go. If you noticed that there was no consciousness in it, what was it that noticed that? I don't remember it, and this is where my question is coming. If it happens again... It will never happen again. Let go of the experience itself. Let go of your worry and concern. Let go of this discrimination between past, present and future. Uh, the letting go part, if uh, I'm afraid that it will repeat itself. Not the experience, but do you know what to do with a person who is only a beginner and in some sort of luck it happens? He reached the clear mind. Again, if you reach clear mind, then keep it clear. If you are worried, if you have fear, then clear mind is gone. Yes. So practice more and return to this moment's clear mind, not to the past, because the past is something that never comes back. Okay? So, completely forget that. Don't relate to that positively or negatively. Don't want to bring it back. Also, don't be afraid of any side effects in the future. Its effect will permeate and fertilize the present. But if you think about it, then you ruin it. Whether you go back to the past or go forward to the future. That's why the Diamond Sutra says, the mind which is separated into past, present and future can never get enlightenment. That's why let go of anything related to past, present and future during your practice. And if you think about it, let go of that thought. That's how you save yourself from any kind of trouble. You think about any experience positively, it catches you. You think about it negatively, it catches you. That's why we always say, like the old Japanese anecdote, if you are in the jungle and you meet the tiger, you have many options. But if you kill the tiger, you become the tiger. If the tiger kills you, you also become the tiger. <laughs> okay?